Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today we have a special podcast with my fiance, Ryan Riley. Howdy. And we are going to talk about engagement and we're going to talk about premarital questions to ask your fiance. Um, So we are going to go through the desiringgod.org questions, which are questions to ask when preparing for marriage. So I'll link that in the description below so you guys can check this out and follow along. And so we are going to get right to it. There are different sections that they talk about so there's um if you agree on theology worship and devotion husband and wife and like headship other one is children lifestyle entertainment conflict work friends health and sickness so we're going to be going over those and i will be reading them and then we'll be answering one question from those different topics right so we are going to go over these questions and the first one is theology it says what do you believe about everything and perhaps read through um design god affirmation of faith to see what you each believe about various biblical doctrines and then the other ones discover how you form your views what is the reason slash believing process um how do you handle the bible so i think all that comes down to like you both should be christians like if someone's a mormon and someone's a christian like mormons are not christians i know that's like hard for people to believe but like they do not believe in the deity of christ and that's a big truth to christianity and there's other religions like if you um do not believe in like core beliefs as a christian like you should not be dating that person also if they call themselves a christian but do not live like a Christian, you have to be very careful with that. Um, anything else you would say about that with theology and just belief and like, I guess, being equally yoked or what would you say to people with that? Um, yeah, missionary dating is not a good thing. Mm-mm. But I would, uh, theory about everything, your belief about everything. I would just look for somebody who's centering their life on Christ and who has sincerity in their walk and humility. And I think the Holy Spirit will iron out a lot of the rest. So that should be the main thing, probably. And, yeah, you can learn to live with a lot of other things, but if they don't have Christ, that's you're not walking together at that point. Mm-hmm. Amen. And I think every one that I've seen who is missionary dated at the end, like even if they get married, they regret it. Like, I don't think I've seen. I know I've heard stories. <clears throat> I've heard of stories where it works out, but for the most part, someone's upset or someone's hurt in well, the end. You also run the risk of losing your losing your salvation. Yeah. Like yeah. Solomon. Mm-hmm. Like other people we've seen in our own lives who, yeah. like, mainly if parents of ki- friends that we had growing up would marry, yeah. you know, a non believer and then become an atheist later on. Mm-hmm. I think the best way to figure that out too is if you go to the same Bible believing church and other people know that person and they're being discipled and they're, they have been under, you know, church discipline in a way of like, they if they were doing something that was wrong that they would use Matthew 18 you know and correct them I think it's very scary when you date outside the church I'm not saying like it can't work I'm not saying that it's unbiblical I'm just saying I really think there is something special about people who date inside a church and when you know like we were talking about this beforehand Courting isn't even really technically biblical pre, um, or sorry, pre-arranged, yeah, marriage is actually more biblical than back then, but 
I think the way I look at prearranged marriage is like people in the church who know you or like family who knows you. That's kind of what I would say about dating in the church. Yeah, it probably got like everything else in life. It probably got manipulated a little bit and used yeah. for, badly for the by the world when people started to use it for political and financial reasons. But I think, yeah, if you have parents who are like, because, you know, having parents arrange a marriage this might be a little bit like not everybody's going to agree with that, but who are what, you know, 20, no, I guess probably more in their forties arranging an 18 year old's marriage uh, or 20 year old's marriage would be better. More, they'd mm-hmm. have more wisdom basically yeah. than and could see a, a little bit better old. than a teenager. So exactly. But, mm. Yeah. Amen. And even anyone who's godly doesn't have to be your parents because some people might be out there and be like, my parents aren't Christian, but like godly leaders or people around you who have seen that person and then they can be like, or maybe they don't know that person, maybe someone you brought to church or whatever. And, but they can like use discernment and look into their life. You're not meeting them on your own. Cause I know a lot of people do like dating outside the church and then they want to fix it. So then they'll go inside the church. But by that point, they're not willing to give them up because they've like fallen in love and then they like defend them and everything. And I feel like that can be dangerous because then you're like, no, they can do no wrong. And I mean, I even was (laughs) caught in that with like the person I used to date before Ryan and that person, like, like Ryan was saying, like, you don't, time doesn't just, he was saying this to me before, time doesn't just fix things too. Like people can lie for a really long time. I mean, time will tell type of thing. And I feel like that happened, but I don't think that really would have worked even in a year. I think it was like my dad and Morgan and people around that saw it and I was blinded. Like I wasn't actually blinded. I just didn't want to believe it. Like I want, I defended and justified because I wanted to be married so bad. And I feel like there's a lot of people out there who just want to be married and they're like, I'm so ready to be married and there's nothing else that's going to be out there. And so they get fearful. And so they like force things that are not God and then try to put God's name on it, which is very scary. But anything else with theology or all right, worship and devotion. So says how important is corporate worship um other participation in church life how important is it to be part of a small group accountability support group what is the importance of music in life in worship what are your daily personal devotion practices prayer reading meditation memorization what would our family devotions look like who would lead who would who leads out in this are we doing this now in an appropriate way praying together about our life in future reading the bible together i thought that was a good one the last one is are we doing this now in an appropriate way because i know a lot of people who will read the bible together and have a quiet time together and it's a very intimate thing and there's people at our church like in the past who had done this and then they like end up sleeping, sleeping together. together doesn't happen to everyone but if you don't have good boundaries like it is an intimate thing to like read the bible and have that connection and spiritually um, and you think, oh, and never, because like, we're just talking about God one second. How can we go to, from that to that? But it's like, there is like this love. And even in some marriage counseling, people say like, they encourage you, like read a chapter with your wife before going to bed or like this or that, because it is like unifying. So what would you say about that? Like, what do we do? I guess with that. Uh, we do pray together a lot. Mm-hmm. So that's been encouraging. Yeah. That often uh, sorts through a lot of uh, the Holy Spirit convicts one way or another if somebody's in the wrong. And so that's good. Mm-hmm. And like if I'm just being a, a poopy diaper, <laughs> then he'll be like, okay, yeah, I'm I'm wrong. So, Or if she is. Yep. She'll be like, I'm a little stinky right now. It's nine times out of ten. <laughs> no. But so, yeah, but I think all those questions just kind of made me think of like, just have somebody who has a worshipful posture to the Lord, Mm. who's like, um, who has a hunger and a thirst for his righteousness and like wants to spend time in the word, or at least wants to want to spend time in the word and wants to read the Bible, wants to pray be at church, you know, wants to grow, open to correction. 
I don't know. Mm. Just those are good signs. Yeah. You know, for, for somebody who you want to hitch your yoke with. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So I see a lot of that in Rye. Worshipful. Mm. Uh, she humbles herself a lot. And yeah, so she's definitely, obviously has a desperately wicked heart. Um, <laughs> Amen to that. But yeah, God doesn't want perfect. He just wants humble and contrite. So. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. The next question is husband and wife. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> no, I just, I just, yeah, I don't know. Um. Husband and wife, what is the meaning of headship and submission in the Bible and in our marriage? What expectations about situations where one of us might be alone with someone of the opposite sex? How are tasks shared at the home? Cleaning, cooking, washing dishes, yard work, etc. Um, what are the expectations for togetherness? What is an ideal non-special evening? How do you understand who initiates sex and how often? Okay, this is all in marriage, people. Just to let you know. Um, who does the checkbook or are there two checkbooks or bank accounts? I think that's kind of what it's saying. So um, to kind of sum up the headship and submission, we know that men are the ones who are the head. Women are supposed to be sub under under the mission of what the man is doing and Lord willing, that is a man who can lead you and is godly and you're not going after a man who, who doesn't seek after the Lord, like Ryan was saying before. And Ryan does do that. Like he seeks the Lord and he has a personal relationship with the Lord and he's not getting that relationship from me or through me. So look for someone like that. So men are called to respect, are to love their wives and women respect their husbands because it's easy for women to love, but it's really hard for women to respect. And it's easy for men to respect because there's like a man code and they like have respect for one another, but it's harder for men to love. And so I think those are things that is, it's important to focus on that in marriage. Anything else you would say with that, with headship or submission? I think both are hard for the other person. And it's supposed to be that way. We're supposed to need God's spirit to be able to walk it out. Like mm-hmm. for Rye, you know, it'd be harder to submit to in, to to when you have, you know, I guess a desire, like you mentioned earlier, to control. Mm-hmm. And for me, it'd be harder to, it can be harder to love at times when, just want to go, you know, and just focus on it's easier to be bury yourself in work than be vulnerable mm. with your wife. And yeah, so mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what about those things. But no, that was good. Um, expectations about situations where one of us might be alone with the opposite sex. We just have it across the board. We d- we're not alone with the opposite sex, either each other before we're married. So I'm not alone with Ryan ever. He's not alone with me, but he's not alone with women besides his sisters or mom. And if we are, then we, t- then we talk about it to each other. Mm-hmm. Yes. And sometimes when that happens, I think it's something where you still shouldn't be like, oh, I just did that. Like you try to flee still like you don't just like oh i'm in this situation i can't move i don't want to be awkward like it reminds me of joseph with potiphar's wife he had to run away and so but there's some situations where you might still fall or like not be bold enough to do that but like from the next time learn and like don't go to your significant other and be like i'm sorry like i didn't mean it It wasn't my fault like humble yourself and say like proverbs 29 25 the fear of man will prove to be a snare but he who trusts the lord be kept safe like i was fearing man I was fearing an awkward situation. So um, that's on me and I'm sorry. Like even though nothing happened, but I feel like that still attacks the other person. Like if I was to be like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I guess I'm sorry, Ryan, but it wasn't a big deal. You're like, well, that's how it starts, you know? And like you, and so I think it's just like coming to them. If you do apologize 
and you had and you share it with them like with humility does that sound right i think the reason for doing it is like because it can probably sound a little bit prideful like oh you know <clears throat> you're gonna spend time with anybody the opposite sex you know or legalistic you know but i think that's some of the counsel that we've gotten from people's own testimonies of different situations where mm -hmm. you know they're heart is desperately wicked and so they say it's not an issue until it is yeah and so just it's obviously not going to be the case with every scenario like there's going to be some people who you're not attracted to and it'll probably never be an issue <laughs> but it's a good rule to live life by probably because of the verse where it says to flee mm. anything that simulates youthful lust <coughs> so yeah, yeah just not providing any provision mm. for the flesh amen to get in yeah amen and where you think you're strong of purity yeah yeah where you think you're strong take heed lest you fall like some people are like oh but that person's ugly like i'm not attracted to them I, there's been weird situations where people are like they are not attractive but something happened because when there's lust involved and the enemy it doesn't matter if there's two people of opposite sex and Less flying around, like anything can happen. So never think you're above that or like King David at any age, like you are capable of anything. So um like and you don't also want to be a bad example, like Billy Graham, he even wouldn't be in an elevator alone with a woman because he just didn't want it to be like a bad picture to someone. Like if they see him walking out of an elevator with a woman, like they could say anything. So to be above reproach is another thing. But um so how are tasks shared at the home, cooking, cleaning? I think that's just something we have to communicate about. I don't think that women are the only ones that do stuff at the house. I think that the big responsibility as a Proverbs 31 woman or most of it is the stuff at the house. But I think like the guy can like clean the car or do repairs or like take out the trash when it's late at night. Like there's certain things that guys can do that maybe women can't or maybe it's like, you know, if there's someone that's at the house, like maybe the guy can answer the door. I just think there's some things that might, that you can communicate like, hey, Ryan, I would like you to do the repairs. Um, and then I'll take care of the kids. You know, one day I'll get the food and shop and cook and wash the clothes. So I think it's just communicating. But I think if you see something, like do something. Like if you see a mess, clean it. So I think that even if you're like, well, that's not my thing. I think what my dad's been teaching me in Trinity is like, if something is dirty and you see hair, you see something like pick it up. And I think there's just like, an everyday practice in life we should learn like you see yeah, trash pick it up rule in general good rule of thumb yeah um what are expectations for togetherness i think, I think that, that's uh yeah something where you would uh, do unto others as you would want them to do unto you i feel like that's what sometimes what the i don't know if it's the holy spirit but that's what i feel sometimes like when just walking by a piece of trash or something like that. Just feel like. Like, eh, someone else will get this it. This was my sidewalk. <laughs> this was my sidewalk then. Mm -hmm. I would appreciate somebody picking it up, so. Yeah, it's good. Do you want to others? Sorry, I wasn't trying to rush you. I just, we have so, <laughs> so many questions that we can't actually Let's answer. Just choose the important ones. Just choose important ones. Um, So we don't have to answer this one. Um, uh, an ideal non-special evening. Um, how do you understand who initiates sex and how often? We don't have to get into that because we're not married yet, so we should not be talking about that, but you guys can talk about that when you're married. Um, who does the checkbook or are there two? I believe that there should be one just for unity and also not to be like, oh, this is my money or um, I got this. It should be yours because you are now one, the two becoming one. So what do you There's people that? who have two two accounts and their joint ownership though. Yeah, you can and do that. I'm just saying that when people are like, This is the money I take out of here because this is mine and then like that, I think that's more what it's real talking about. And mm -hmm. I think that can be scary. Yeah. You should <clears throat> I mean, yeah. Yeah. And if you do that, we're not saying it's like unbiblical. I'm just saying that just to maybe avoid problems, I think that would help. And also it, some people do it too. This is a side note, but also because they're like, they don't know if it's going to work out. And people nowadays are just assuming there's going to be divorce. So it's easier. People get married for the wrong reasons, but it's like when you combine it, it's kind of like we're in it for the long haul. So kind of like that and accountability, what you're spending your money on. Um, 
and it's your money. Anyway, children, how should, or not how should we have children? Should we have children? If so, when and why? So I think that's something you can talk about with your, um, whoever you're courting or engaged to. Um, I think we talked about it before we were engaged, which I think is totally fine. But um, yeah. We still don't know. We still do not know. Yes. But, but I do believe we know we should have children. Like we're called to be fruitful and multiply. I don't think that's mm-hmm. something we're not sure about. Mm-hmm. But just not like when. But I think we know why biblically. Because mm-hmm. the Lord says it. How many? We do not know. We do not know. How far apart? I personally would like them close together because I was close to my siblings and I like that. But like, again, we do not know. Yeah. I don't think that matters really. But um. Would you consider adoption? Um, we don't know. I don't know. I feel like the Lord would have to open that up. I don't feel like we, f- I feel really called to adopt, but if the Lord makes that clear, I'm not opposed to it. Um, what are the standards of behavior for our children? What would you say about this? I mean, <clears throat> I think you want to run your house off of God's word. Yeah. And Honor your father and mother. Yeah, I don't that know. life might go well with you. A rod of discipline drives out. Yeah, you know, folly from the heart of the child. So yeah, that's the next question. It says, what are the appropriate ways to discipline them? How many strikes <laughs> before they're dot 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 whatever? I don't know what that means, but basically, like for first like three strikes and you're out. Oh, okay. <laughs> it meant strikes as it's physical. It's- I was so confused. That makes more sense. But I think that we both agree with physical discipline, like spankings on the bottom, no Mm -hmm. like abuse or out of anger. I think we both experienced um, good discipline, like no abuse. But like, I think we both experienced like spankings. You probably didn't get as many as I did, (laughs) but I think it really helped me. So I think it really did drive out a lot of my rebellion and stubbornness. So I'm I'm pro spankings because I got spankings for a long time and my dad's really good at spanking. So I think they're good. Um, but just not out of anger and yeah. Yeah. So what expectations as time spent with them and when they go to bed? So I think this is something that you can communicate with your spouse of like how are we going to spend time with them? What I would say is... Ryan and I both believe that like we want most of our time either if we're at work we are you know working and that's our job but when we're with the kids like work with the kids you know like and then we understand though like we both have jobs where we could be called at different times like Ryan especially with your job um me too in ministry so I think we understand that and I think we have compassion for that but like my parents did and what they talked about growing up was if you're gone, like make it count. Don't just be like if your child has a game and you're like, no, I'd rather go golfing or play tennis. It's like, no, actually, you should be there at your child's game. You know what I mean? So I think it's just like it. it's understandable if like there's something you already had planned and you have to be there. And you ha- I think you should like communicate that with your spouse. But I think time spent with them. We used to have special special days because there's four of us kids. And my dad would each week take us on a special day. And I think that was very special. And I think that was good to for him to bond with each of us differently because my mom was with us like most of the day. But yeah. Um, yeah. So when they go to bed, that's up to you guys. I think they should get a good night's rest. But yeah. What so signs what, of what affection? Are the, what are the next sections? Um, school, homeschool. I'm just going to read these and we won't answer them. But what signs of affection will you show them? What about school, homeschool, Christian school, public school? I think we want homeschool. Okay, lifestyle. What are the next? Lifestyle, entertainment, conflict, work, friends. There's a lot. Health and sickness. So the next ones I'll just read and we'll do pick one because we've been doing, we've been going through all of them. So Yeah, sorry, we're going to speed it up. Sorry. Lifestyle, own a home or not, why? What kind of neighborhood, why? How many cars, new, used, Um, question mark? View of money in general, how much to the church? How do we make money decisions? Where will we buy clothes, department store, thrift store, in between, why? 
So this is just how your lifestyle is going to look like. So I kind of want to talk about the money one and like tithing. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, I think statistically people say that the main reason why people get divorced is because of finance, financial yeah. reasons. So to have a strong understanding, maybe it'd be good to go over uh, different verses about uh, wealth and and have just to help like reframe our mind uh, towards kingdom wealth and how Jesus views wealth. Not it's not a bad thing, but he definitely views it differently from what the world tells us to view it as. And so, making sure that we're on the same page mm. with that. And part of that is tithing. Yeah, I mean tithing is an Old Testament thing, uh, but. Uh, I'm just reading that today, Malachi. But um, we're we are in a new covenant, and so we're. Sp- you'd almost expect there to be a higher level of generosity and giving mm-hmm. with what we've been given in this covenant. So yeah, uh, exactly. <coughs> yeah, and just then it'd be good to go over that. Yeah, and then entertainment goes along with it. I'm sorry, I'm not trying. <laughs> I didn't mean to talk over you. Um, but it says, how much money should we spend on entertainment? like Netflix or like different things people do. Um, How often should we eat out? Where, what kind of vacations are appropriate and helpful for us? How many toys, as in snowmobiles, boats, cabins? Um, Should we have television? Where, what is fitting to watch? How much? What are the criteria for movie in the theater? Um, What will our guidelines be for our kids? So So, is that all under lifestyle? Entertainment. So this was a different section. I moved on. Sorry. already moved on? I'm sorry. Not with you. I'm so with you, baby. (laughs) But I think um, entertainment we have to be very careful with because um, it's easy to want to enjoy life through movies and music and things. And so I think you really have to communicate, like, how much money you're spending with that. And even with food, I think food is another thing of, like, you can be a glutton. Without realizing it, especially the first year of marriage, a lot of people gain a lot of weight the first year because they're like, oh, like this is honeymoon phase. Like, let's just, but we have to be careful, not just because we want to like stay fit, but we don't want to be, be gluttons and eat all our money away because it's good to have a budget. So I would say that's another thing is to have a budget so that you can have entertainment. You can enjoy things. So you use every dollar, but. I think that's a good thing to do. Encourage people. They don't have to, but I think it's a cool thing. So you can have a check, a check, a section for like entertainment or lifestyle things. Spend time with anybody the opposite sex, you know. Um, the next one is conflict. So, what makes you angry, Ryan? I do make him angry sometimes. Um, how do you handle your frustration or anger? Who should bring up an issue that is bothersome? What if we disagree about, what if we disagree both about what should be done and whether it is serious? Will we go to bed angry at each other? What is our view of getting help from friends or counselors? Which one do you want to answer? Wow, that's a lot. And this is like I was saying, this is the one that we have experienced even more so in premarital and engagement. Can you read them one more time? All of them. Mm-hmm. What makes you angry? How do you handle? How do you handle? I'm saying anger and handle. How do you handle your frustration or anger? Who should bring up an issue that is bothersome? What if we disagree both about what should be done and whether it is serious? Will we go to bed angry at each other? What is our view of getting help from friends or counselors? Wow, a lot of those are good. How do you handle your frustration or anger? Answer these kind of fast. But I think that's, I don't things. know that we need to answer these personally, but I think that's a good one to go How over. Should you? Yeah. Because just to know expectations in a relationship. Yeah. Of, yeah. It's, I think easy, it's easy to not, not yeah, do that it. in the honeymoon phase. So. It's easy to not deal with it and to brush things under the rug. And I think that um, who that should too. bring up an yeah. issue that's bothersome? Who 
whoever it's bothering. It's like the like. Well, also the other person though. If they see it, if yeah. They know, if they know, that's, that's true. What you, Christ if said, "If your brother has something against you, go to him." Yeah, even if you're just giving your yeah. gift at the altar. Yeah. Because that that the crazy thing is that impacts your relationship with God. Yeah. Having something with something at somebody else. Mm. Go to bed so. angry? No, because the Bible speaks against that. Do not let the sun mm-hmm. go down your anger. Not that you have to like hash it all out, but I think you should at least pray together and like say, let's talk about this later. And like, like Ryan says, table it and then have a time that you're going to talk about it. So you're not just like ignoring it or maybe just pray. But I think you should stay up as long as you can to deal with whatever you can. What is your view of getting help from friends or counselors? I think it's very good. I think that um, Ryan's better at that than me. But I think for me, I, I've been getting closer. Like I've been getting closer. I've been liking that more. So like Ryan knows people who don't go to our church, but like who are still people who are very wise and in the word and godly men and women of God, godly godly men and women. And so they're giving us like advice or like giving us books to read and then we'll meet with them. So I think that. It's very wise. Out of them all two counselors, there's much wisdom. What do you say? No, sorry, we just have to. Yeah, there's much wisdom, but just making gotta make sure who your counselors yeah, are. Exactly. Because, uh, yeah, I mean that's something when we're doing discipleship that was really hard for me was like I think I had some friends who weren't a great influence on me, mm-hmm. and so just yeah, it's. You can know by people's fruit who's good to go to. but Yeah, bad company corrupts good moral. Work, who is the main breadwinner? Should a wife work outside the home before kids, with kids at home, or after kids? What are your views of daycare for children? What determines where we, are lo- we will locate? Job, whose job? Church, family. So I think this is, again, something you guys just discuss on your own. Is it good to do things with friends but without spouse? Yeah. What will we do if one of us really likes to hang out with so and so and the other doesn't? I'll oh, answer the first one, you answer the second one. Is it good to do things with friends but without a spouse? Um, I think if we're talking about like me with girls, I think that's fine. But I wouldn't be like hanging out with like guys your guy friends without you like that's weird mm. but if they're like girls and if this is saying I think that what i same. get like would i be with the girls or something or hang out with them and ryan's not there i think that's healthy i don't think you should be with each other 24 7 i think it's healthy to be around other people but do i want to be around ryan 24 7 yes but is that always possible sadly not no not. don't even it's true no. What will we do if one of us really likes to hang out with so-and-so and and the other doesn't? What would you say about this? What if what? (laughs) What will we do if one of us really likes to hang out with so-and-so, like someone, but the other one does not like to hang out with them? Just communicate that. I mean, yeah, communicate, but if it's not a godly reason, then maybe they suck it up. and Yeah, it's like, why? But you don't have to. I don't think you have to. I don't even know. I feel like half these questions I feel like I'm kind of answering in ignorance because I'm not married, you know, but yeah. Exactly. Um hopefully the Lord is speaking to people through this. So. Mm-hmm. Health and sickness, this is it, and then we're done. Um <laughs> do you have or have you had any sicknesses or physical problems that could affect our relationship? Allergies, cancer, eating disorders, venereal disease, etc. So this might be TMI, but actually, yeah, I think that is something that is important to talk about because it's like, it's weird for people to be like, hey, if you've been sexually active in your past, like, can you get checked, you know, if you have any sexual transmitted diseases? But like, I think that's very respectful and kind to do that. Not saying like we won't get married, but it's something that would be like, hey, maybe you should get this treated. So I think it's just coming into marriage with like, honesty and 
Yeah, I think it's like for me, I mean, I had a scare of breast cancer a couple months ago and Ryan and I had to walk through that. And it's like I was like, Ryan, you don't have to marry me. Like if I get diagnosed, like we don't have to get married. And Ryan's like, Mariah, I didn't even want to get married before, but I want to marry you. And like whatever happens, like I'll walk through it with you and I'll take care of you because he's a caregiver. And he's like, I'll take care of you. And so that just touched my heart and just walking through that and seeing like how much closer we got through that scary time I just think that was really cool but that could affect a relationship would be like if there's like something you have that's like either you could die soon or something that would like be passed to them would you agree to that of course okay um do you believe in divine healing and how would prayer relate to medical attention Do you mm. believe? Do you believe? Yeah, I, I believe in divine healing. I think yeah. I've heard of. I've never. I've seen some miracles. Nothing like, like you know, growing legs up. growing back. But, yeah. but I think, yeah, you pray for healing, and if you if you they, if they don't get healed, then they don't get healed. Yeah, you just leave it that you don't go to the doctor. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> like going with it i'm like no sorry <laughs> you goober uh i think uh like uh john wimber said was it john wimber yep yeah he wrote the power healing book and the lord had a healing ministry through his his deal but i think you you pray for healing and sometimes the lord heals through a miracle sometimes he uses doctors mm. so amen yep. conventional medicine just like paul told Timothy to drink some wine for his stomach. Some God doesn't only work through one way. Yeah, exactly. But um, I think that there's people who it's scary when they do not believe in healing. Um, so I think you have to discuss that because there's some people who like do not believe that God can heal and other people do. So if you're like believing that other person's like, I'm not even going to pray to ask God. Um, I think you should talk about that um okay how do you think or how do you think about exercise and healthy eating yeah i'm sorry bodily discipline is of little value or some value spiritual discipline is for this life and the life to come not that i'm just trying to use that verse because i haven't worked out in a long time but <laughs> it's kind of true you haven't either so we definitely do not have our wedding bods that we thought we wanted but that's okay. I'd still marry you. Even if I'm not how I want to be. I'm excited to be with you. Lord willing. So what do you think? I agree. And in marriage, what do you think about exercise, eating healthy? Is it important? I don't know. I think it definitely makes me feel sharper mm -hmm. whenever I work out. And so, but then again, God's power is made perfect in our weakness. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Uh, I was legally blonde. It's like, exercise gives endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people don't shoot their husbands. They just don't. So, if you don't want to hurt your spouse, work out. <laughs> <laughs> and seek the Lord, actually, first. That's the most important. Yeah. Okay, this is the last one. We're done. This How do you have... the legally blonde Bible. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. That was a joke. Hello. <laughs> How do you? I'm uh, sorry. Do you have any habits that adversely affect health? Mm. How much I like sugar. Mm. Yeah, that uh, is true. It's a silent killer. Yeah. <sighs> I think if you're out there too, and you have a habit that can affect someone in a way of like maybe even like alcohol or smoking, like that's an addiction, not a habit. But I think you also have to be aware of an addiction. Um, and sometimes you don't even realize you do weird stuff until you're married and you'll be like, that's weird. Like it's weird to have six cups of coffee a day, but some people do that. Or um, I think another thing is smoking or like e-cig. That's something that people justify but like for some people, they're like, hey, that actually is affecting you. I'd rather you not do that. 
um i don't think that's good for your body but other people are like no this is my body i'm gonna do what i want but you gotta remember when you're married your body is not your own that's a weird concept but it's biblical first corinthians 7 and so i think even that comes with health and how you live your lifestyle i think you shouldn't be controlling but i think that before marriage you should talk about these things and if there's someone who's a fixer upper and you're like oh don't worry in marriage i'll make sure that they don't do this and they don't drink all day and they don't like smoke cigars and if you don't want them to do that and you think you're going to change them like trust me you're not going to change them so just be aware of don't marry a fixer upper marry someone that you if they never changed or got worse you could still marry them what do you say about that I think you can always do that. Mm -hmm. I think by God's grace and strength, you could make any marriage work. Yep. You know, that, that'd be, some marriages would be a real sacrifice. <laughs> you know, you'd really be like somebody marrying an unbeliever who's abusive and, yeah. you know. And, yeah, because think about how long God stayed with us. Yeah. Amen. While we were unfaithful. Like, was yeah. it with Gomer? What was mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hosea and Gomer. Hosea. Yeah. And how painful that was for the Lord mm. to stay with us. But I think if you could avoid that, it'd be a wise thing to do. Yeah. To, to not, not, uh, yeah. Marry someone to change them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that was all the questions. So sorry that was long. But if you guys want to go over these questions, again, I'll link this in the description below. But do you have anything else that you want to say before we close? Anything? But I'm excited for you guys to go over these questions. If you guys are dating someone or engaged, I would be careful about any questions that are about like sexual stuff. Um, unless you're with like people who are doing premarital counseling with you if you're looking for premarital counseling like i would encourage you to go to a church um or just godly people who you look at their marriage you can tell that they are submitted to the lord and to the word and just ask them even if you feel like oh they would never like just you don't know just try and some books that we have gone through that people that we're still going through but people have recommended us is the marriage builder that's one that we're going through we're only on chapter three but um it's called creating true oneness to transform your marriage that's by larry crab uh, the other one is the two becoming one that's what we're doing um for our premarital and then the other one is like love and respect and i will link these all in the description below i would just say in the engagement season i would encourage you to um pray for your single friends and don't just neglect them and be like i'm in this fun season about to get married like pray for them care about them like we have single friends at our church that it's like i need to stop trying to set them up that's my issue but i do pray for you guys and i do want to see you guys find godly spouses and also know that you don't have to find them that the lord can bring them to you um but also when the lord prompts you to pursue them with purity I'm talking to the men but i love you guys i'm thankful for everyone if you're single engaged dating if you've even been recently divorced or just called to singleness like praying for you and i'm thankful for you guys well if you haven't already please make sure to like subscribe and share this video if you like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast just type in calvary conversations you can also follow us check our behind the scenes on instagram at calvary conversations Thank you so much to everyone who has supported Calvary Conversations. If you would like to donate, you guys can do that in the description below that says donate. And also you can make sure to check out our website, calvaryconversations.com. So thank you so much guys, and we'll see you next week. God bless.